Adding and subtracting integers really trips kids up, but this is a good way to approach it for the very first time. Um, you'll want to buy these tile spacers, and they all look like just little plus signs. You can get these at the hardware store. They're not very expensive at all. And then you're just going to trim them so that some of them look like minus signs. So just keep some pluses, about half of them, and then trim them so about half of them look like minus signs. And you could do this as young as fifth grade, but it's also good for the 10th grader who still just gets frustrated about not being confident when negative numbers pop up. So you'll want to give these in partners and try an inquiry approach. That's really the best way. The hands-on method helped them really grasp the concept and then actually remember it. So I like to start out this way and not even give the rules and just have them develop the rules for themselves. So the first thing you want to do is introduce the concept of a zero pair. So anytime that they have one plus and one minus, that represents a positive one and a negative one, it adds up to zero. And adding or subtracting zero doesn't affect anything. We can always add zero or take away zero without affecting the problem at all. So do that on the overhead projector or the Elmo or everyone together so they can all see it. And then try a few sample problems together too. So with the whole class, get started together so they can see what you're doing. Try something like negative two plus negative three all together as a group so they can see how this works. So the same sign is going to look obvious at first, but that's how they kind of get the hang of this. So negative two is two minus signs because each one represents one. Negative three is going to be three of them. And then they figure out what's the final answer. So we just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, all negative. The answer is going to be negative five. And you can try another simple problem, something like five plus one, both positive. So then they'll have five positive ones plus one more positive one. What's their answer? They just count them up. So they'll get the hang of those quickly. You probably only need one of each, hopefully for most classes. And then you're gonna try mixing signs. So try something like negative seven plus two. And they're gonna see how the zero pairs actually work. You're gonna to wanna to do a couple like this before you send them off on their own so they can see how they're gonna use the zero pairs. So with negative seven, they would need seven minus signs, and then they're adding a positive two, so now they have some of each sign. So remembering how zero pairs work, have them move things around. If they take one positive and one negative and put them together, we know that's zero. We can take it out of the picture because adding or subtracting zero doesn't influence the answer. We can do that again. And they're going to do that until they have only one sign left because that's when we know we're at that easy point just like these ones where we can just add them all up and figure out our answer. So now that we've subtracted and taken away zero, we can see easily one, two, three, four, five. And they're negative. So there's our answer. Once you try a couple like these, then send kids off on their own. I like to have them do it in pairs and explore this and maybe even just chart the answers. I like to have them chart what happens when both are negative, both are positive, one of each, and make sure you include one of each where the number with greater absolute value is negative and the number with greater absolute value is positive because that's how they're going to end up developing those rules. Guided questions can really lead them to notice these patterns and start thinking in terms of phrasing their rules with the word absolute value. They'll observe that the number with the greater absolute value is going to be more powerful and influence the sign of the answer. But they can come up with that rule for themselves and then they'll actually understand the concept and remember it. With any discovery activity, make sure you come together at the end, discuss the rules and observations that everyone had, make sure everyone's got the idea, and be sure to clear up any misconceptions before you move on to subtracting, probably even on another day. Okay, when we're subtracting, we're going to use the zero pairs a little differently. So make sure you understand these examples before you try this with your class. So try this one first, negative three minus negative one. We're going to go back to their first understanding of negatives when they learned this in first grade was take it away, removing something. So if we start with negative three and then we take away a negative one, take away one of those negatives. What do we have left? A simple example like this helps them get the idea and get started. Then you want to try one that they have to use zero pairs. So something like two minus four. So they're going to start with two positives, 
Now, knowing that this means take away, we would want to take away four positives. Well, we don't have four positives here to take away. But remember, we can always add or subtract zero without affecting the answer of the problem. So in this case, we're going to add zero pairs. When they were learning how to add this way, we would take away zero pairs, but now for subtracting, sometimes we need to add zero to help us understand and see and visualize this in a hands-on way. So if we wanna take away four, we're gonna need four positives. Well, we can add the two positives that we need as long as we add them in a form of zero, which means we have to add a zero pair each time. This, I can go ahead and add in without affecting the answer. And this, I can go ahead and add in. I added zero twice. Now I do have four that I can take away. So I take away the four positives to do my subtraction, and now I can see what I ended up with and what I have left, a negative two. Let's try another one that works a little bit differently. Negative six minus one. So now we're starting with a negative. The kids will put negative six in for their counters, and then they wanna take away a positive one. Well, I don't have any positives here. I can't take away one plus sign because I don't even see one. Well, I can add a plus sign, but remember, I can't just add that because that's changing the problem. I have to add zero. So I can put a zero pair in here, and now I do have one positive that I can take away. Look what we're left with, seven negatives. Negative seven is the answer. So once you expose kids to this idea, they can play around with the zero pairs. And for some kids, this is what really makes it click and they'll remember and understand how these integers work.